Hi guys, Juju here from Juju Dang Art and today I will be talking about different types of resin that you can use to coat your art pieces. So I usually use resin to coat my liquid art pieces after they've dried and what resin will do is it will create a clear plastic coating on top to protect it uh, as well as make it shiny and glossy and um, even bring out the colors from my liquid paint. So um, with the types of paint I use after it dries I feel that there's a bit of a darkness that occurs with the acrylics um, but once that resin uh, cover comes on top then it brings out the colors. So resin can um, definitely help your pieces come to life. So I've used three different types of resin and um, I'll also have tips for you and what you should be using and um, what is helpful to create a really clear uh, coating on your artwork. So um, as for what you will need, uh, you will need some, well I like to use uh, big popsicle sticks. Those are always helpful for stirring um, as well as um, trying to move around the resin, uh, as well as plastic measuring cups with the measurements on the cup, uh, gloves, and hand sanitizer. So what the hand sanitizer does is Say if you're not wearing gloves and you're just trying to fix little um, areas, if you get any resin on your fingertips, the hand sanitizer helps to take that stickiness off. So that is always good to have on hand. As well as painter's tape, uh, a plastic cover for your table. So resin will not stick to plastic items. Um, so once it cures, you can just like kind of chip it off or like grab it and it'll come off usually, uh, as well as a torch and a plastic spreader. So when you're working with resin, uh, it's important to have the room temperature at around 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit because resin needs um, warmth to work properly. If it's too cold, um, it won't cure um, as readily. And so um, you know, usually for resins, it's one-to-one. -one. So say you need a hundred milliliters of resin for your art piece. Um, you know, you would measure 50 milliliters of um, the hardener and 50 milliliters of the actual resin. And so you pour these two together, you mix, and what you want to do is you want to mix thoroughly for at least three minutes. And in order to decide how much resin you need, I actually use um, Art Resin's calculator. It's actually really, um, it's a good tool for when you want to know how much resin you need so that you're not wasting resin. Uh, and so when you're mixing, you're going to obtain a lot of bubbles in this mixture, but that's okay um, because that's what the torch is for later on. So mixing for three minutes and then um, what you want to do is you want to pour the resin out and then use the plastic spreader to spread the resin out. Resin will flow, um, you know, in whichever direction it wants to, but sometimes you might have to push it and maneuver it in certain um, ways to cover the entire piece. And what you want to do is you actually have to babysit resin because you have to watch for the bubbles, you have to make sure that each corner of your piece is being covered. Sometimes the resin will move and shift. Um, so uh, a level table is always helpful. Um, so you definitely need to watch it. And so after you've done pouring, um, you'll want to torch it and um, wait another five minutes to see if more bubbles have come up and then torch it again. So. I actually, I think, torch every, like, um, you know, I'll wait in five or ten minute or fifteen minute increments and I'll continue to watch because bubbles will continue to come up. Um, this might also cause dust and fur to start, if you have a dog or a cat, um, you might get particles on top of your resin which is really annoying and so I have to pick out those pieces either with a tweezer or a toothpick. Um, so when you're doing that sometimes you might disrupt the layer of resin but torching will help to smooth it out again. Also, um, so let's go on to talk about the three different types of resins that I have used. So I have used Envirotex, Art Resin, and East Coast Resin. 
The most expensive resin is Art Resin, and that costs $119 um, with free shipping for the one gallon kit. And for the Envirotex, that cost me $86 with shipping. And then East Coast Resin was $59 with shipping. So just because a resin is more expensive doesn't mean it's higher quality. Um, it could be that Art Resin is the um, highest quality resin out there. That, that could be very possible. But from the results that I've seen, um, I have been using, um, you know, the other types of resins and I've gotten similar results. So for example, let's take a look at Art Resin. So Art Resin, um, there's, it's supposed to be, you know, there's supposed to be no odors. Um, it's supposed to be non-toxic. However, when you work with any resin, it doesn't matter what it says on the label, when you're torching, you know, anything, there are vapors in the air. So I would advise to wear a respirator, um, and I can show you um, a picture of that, uh, and make sure that there's quite a bit of ventilation. Um, I wouldn't use it with your animals around, with your kids around, like maybe go to another room with, a, with that is ve well ventilated, and um, just do your art there. So... Um, you know, I know some people might work, um, you know, just in their living room, um, but sometimes those fumes can be um, harmful. So, uh, yeah, so with Art Resin, I actually found that um, their resin was very liquidy, um, so it was very flowy, and I found that it actually took longer to cure, so as in to harden. So when I would pour it, I actually felt like I had to babysit quite a bit and that it was too liquidy for me. Um, but the end result was fine. Um, everything looked really clear. And so let's go on to Envirotex. When I used Envirotex, I actually felt that the consistency um, was less liquidy um, and so the curing time was shorter um, uh, as in... Uh, for when we talk about bubbles, I felt that uh, Envirotex compared to Art Resin had the same amount of bubbles. You just try to remove the bubbles with, you know, your torch. So Envirotex actually worked well for me and, and product was great. And then East Coast Resin I actually found to um, be probably the hardest to work with um, later on. It was weird. I think the resin over time when it, I guess, I don't know if it expired or um, maybe it was too old that I felt that it would cure too quickly. Um, so I found with the East Coast Resin, which was the cheapest, um, probably was um, the most difficult to work with maybe. Um, but end result was totally fine as well. Um, overall though, I feel that Envirotex was actually the best um, for price and um, for the uh, the fluid consistency and the curing time. So for me, it wasn't the most expensive product that I found to be the best for my artwork. I actually found that Art Res or sorry, Envirotex was um, the better product out of all three. Um, but you know, uh, to each their own. Of course, you should try out many different types of resin. Uh, of course, uh, safety comes first, so please be careful with the torch, be careful with the fumes, um, and yeah, and just have fun with your artwork. And if you have any questions, you can always email me and um, you can follow me. I'm on Instagram at Juliet underscore Dang. I'm on Facebook at Juju Dang Art. I also have an Etsy shop. Uh, I'd also like to thank DNAS, which is a Seattle local designer who provided my amazing jacket. Check this out. Woot woot. Like, this jacket is totally rad, so thank you so much, DNAS, for providing this for my uh, vlog. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye.